So, um, Antvenia, Ella Beatsy Bobo. Um, halfway through this film, I said to myself, um, what was the point? And that's the truth. Like, halfway through, I was like, what exactly was the point in what I just watched? Now, granted, the reason... I was never a fan of The Lion King. And I might be the only person who is not a fan of the film. The last time I watched The Lion King was in 1994, when it came out. So I think I watched it twice when I was a kid, and that was it. Like, I've, I always preferred Basil the Grey Master Detective and Robin Hood. So, it was, it was just... And also, Simba's a brick. Like, I mean, like... Simba, the, the, the guy's, a, the guy's a, he's a crap character, man. Complete crap, void, lifeless character. But the reason why I wanted to watch it was because of the graphics. So I was like, okay, ooh, okay, let's see these guys in CG come through and, let, and, 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 and let's just see how different a feeling it will be watching photorealistic um, lions um, act out this story. And 1000%, I think everybody agreed the photorealism, the graphics on display are outstanding. Completely and utterly outstanding. Um, like, it's just, it's, those are real lions. And there are times when, especially when you see, 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 see the lions roar and you see their teeth come out, you're like, whoa, this is intense. Like, so, from that point of view, it's, 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 it's bloody amazing. But even as great as the graphics were, this is now the difference. This is that shows you how pointless this remix are, how pointless the Jungle Book was. Because the beauty of 2D animation is its heightened reality. And the whole point of 2D animation is that it's not supposed to be real. It's not trying to be real. It's taking stuff that you, you, you see that, that, that it's real and giving it an artistic expression, an artistic tone, an, an artistic twinge. So the expressions of the characters and everything that you see in these Disney cartoons from the animals, it's all from pen and, and paper. You can't get that from photorealistic 3D animation. So as you're watching this and you're, and you're seeing the interactions between Scar and Mufasa, Simba and Scar and everything, you're like, yeah, man, the expressions are just on there. I mean, it's, it looks real. It looks pretty real, but it's like the way lions and, and these guys, the way lions emote and the way that they... Um, express themselves is very different from how humans express themselves. But the whole point of those 2D animations was that, oh, let's how is putting human expressions and human emotions on these animals. So as I was watching, I was like, yeah, it's 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 felt lifeless, and a lot of the characters it just felt very lifeless because, okay, it's real, all right, and so so what's what the hell? But I will say though, um, Scar was amazing. For me, I think that was the best part of, of, the, of the whole film. I think she told Ejiofo, because Jeremy Irons was amazing at Asuka, but I think Ejiofo really took it up in notch, and he really took it to, to an extra level. I just think he's... Basically, he should be doing more voice acting work, for sure. As in the amount of character and life he gave to this, to, to this character, just his enunciations, he, the tonations of, 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 the, of the words and everything was... I mean, it was, it was brilliant. And he could just tell how why he's such a great theatre actor to begin with. Um, so yes, just and just the way Scar was doing. This is Scar was scary. <laughs> I was like, dude, there is something wrong with this guy. <laughs> something really wrong with this guy. Singing. You see, basically watching this, I actually, actually forgot about. Oh yeah, there's there's singing in this, isn't there? I was like, oh wow, okay, I forgot. Um, so the singing in in, in this. Um, What did I what would I say about the singing in this man? Um Don I mean the singing from the kids was pretty good. And it would just I think it just threw me off because I saw I don't I don't watch many m musicals, so to go from them just talking to like singing like really amazing. I just can't wait to be king. I was like, whoa, okay, now nah, I'm alright, wow. Um But I think, you know, once Beyonce now came in, obviously Beyonce plays the older now, and he had Donald Glover, and I think because I was watching, um, you know, Judy's Corner when they were sort of like pre uh, reviewing the trailer, and they were pretty much saying that why would you have Donald Don Glover? Is not, it's not a singer, he sings part time. Jimmy Fox is an amazing, outstanding singer. Like, Jimmy Fox was a musician before he was an actor or anything, so 
why remember this is voice acting not people in real why wouldn't you pick jamie fox because beyonce lubricated and reincarnated and sacrificed Donald glover single words it was it was more than a mismatch it was cheap it was like if Beyonce was singing, and then you hear like a weird kind of annoying background vocal just seeping its way in. It was it was too unbalanced. So, but, but is there something? Jimmy Fox is around. You know that he's an actor. He's an outstanding singer. Why wouldn't you use him? And the only reason for that is because I remember there was a Hollywood Reporters round table, and I think it had John Favreau and Donald Glover there. And John Favreau told Donald Glover that basically his kid has like all of his music and i think has like a post of him but basically his kid really loves childish gum baby no so when i just thought that, i was like ah oh, okay so in john favreau's mind is like if i can ever have a chance to cast donald glover because my kid loves him i'm gonna cast him and i think D disney loves him as well but wrong you know and also like his i thought his voice acting was flat simba is a crap character let me just be clear and i think watching this again reminded me just how there's nothing to, to, to this character. So, but I think he, Jimmy Fox would have been far better in, in, in my view. Um, but I think you see, when you're doing a remake, especially when you're spending this much work on photorealism and, and everything, you should at least try and maybe be bold. And I think this is where a better filmmaker would have been best pressed. Like for instance, if let's say you brought in like a Spielberg or even a Joe Johnson or someone, to just maybe give it give, give a, a different twist to the tale, it would have been better because I just think John Favreau, you didn't say anything new, and this felt pretty much like a homage to the film. Where it's like, is there any point in watching a homage? We already know what what the hell this film is. This is one of the most popular films of all time, so people already know know, know it fully. So, it, the whole point of art and artistic expression is taking risks. So, I thought that just. Tr you could have improved... There are many things you could improve upon in The Lion King. I know many people think it's perfect. I don't think it's perfect. I think Simba could have been improved upon a lot more. Um, Simba in the cartoon was... The guy was a... He was a, a crap character. And I think, again, I remember that, yeah, I really hated adult Simba. I think adult Simba just seemed just... He just, he just annoyed me. So they could have just given more to Simba's character give him more to his character. I can just give him much more of a personality, especially when he was older. I think younger Simba actually seemed a lot better. Like, I remember when, because there was one scene when Simba goes to this guy's like, yo, man, like, I'm going to be, you know, um, like, like when I'm a king, I'm going to be ordering you around. How how, how weird is that? <laughs> and and Scar was like, eh, how weird is that, you little piece of... So, but yeah, so I think overall, taking this into account, I just felt that great graphics, superb graphics, Apart from that, pointless. Great singing from, from Beyonce, although so that Beyonce can be a bit too OTT with the singing, but still, you know, like her, her edition of the Can You Feel the Love Tonight was amazing. I mean, Glover wasn't really there. Uh, Timon and Pum, okay, fine. So just think overall, um, I'm going to have to roll with a um, tier four for this, tier four. I think <laughs> I can't give this a tier three because I think tier three is when you just have a decent, good film. This film is just sort of bleh. It's just there. I can't call it bad because it's not like a bad film. Because it's sort of like, it's similar to like Force Awakens, which was a New Hope ripoff. But Force Awakens just annoyed me a lot more than, than this. So, whereas like 12 Force Awakens, I'd give that like a classy break. This, I'd give tier 4. This, I'd give tier 4. Where tier 4 is where standard, fine, tick, tick the boxes. But I can't, I can't call this like a good watch, which is a tier three. So I think a tier four is the um, right allocation for this for a Lion King. And yeah, just to reiterate, man. So this is supposed to be depicting Africa. Depicting Africa. And one of the key scenes is Hakuna Matata. Not Hakuna Matata, Hakuna Matata. Yeah, thanks.